Hello, everybody. Welcome to Bar Tack and Daughters. Make sure I'm in the picture. You are. And we're going to talk about Colt and its decision to stop making rifles for the general public. So, I want to get into things. So, um, this is the only Colt that I own. This is a M16A1 Colt. It is, of course, semi automatic only. Um, if we take the pin out of it and open it up, you can see Colt didn't even put the, uh, the block in there so you couldn't convert it to full auto. So they did a retro job. This is their retro reissued M16A1 rifle. It's got your A1 standard sights on it. It's got your A1 flash hider, three prong. It has triangle handguards, of course. It's got the pistol grip with a little uh, hole through it. It's got the rounded butt plate. Um, no uh, hole in the stock for a cleaning kit. It's got your forward assist and no shell deflector. So this is a pretty good copy. It is a Colt, made by Colt. Um, these reissued rifles, they were selling for $2,400 with MSRP. $2,400 for a very basic 50, 60 euro designed rifle. This, you remember, these came out in the 60s. So they are 60 years old now, just about. Um, and they're on the CNR list, believe it or not. And yet these are the dangerous black rifles. That's bullshit, we all know it. The fact is, is that we're, about, we're talking about Colt. Colt had the monopoly on these for decades, and they sold them like that for decades. Had military contracts for decades, and then they lost all that crap. Well, because of poor management skills. They've been in bankruptcy more than once. And I'm going to show you the reason why that uh, Colt stopped selling these. It's very simple. If you want one of these, MSRP is $2,400. That means if you're lucky, you might get one for $2,000. I did not pay nowhere near this for this gun, but I still overpaid for what is essentially the run-of-the-mill, pencil-barreled AR-15 the only thing it's got on it is Colt's roll stick, roll mark on it right there. That's it. That's the only thing. So, we're going to look at option number two here. Even if you buy these in the 90s before everybody was making ARs, you had some options. You could go to Bushmaster before Remington took them over and uh, became that mess. So, here you go. This right here is a dispatcher's carbine. It's got the heavy H barrel on it with the bird cage. All right, it's carbine leaf, 16 inch barrel. It has um, a classical stock on it, but it came with the regular butt stock. Um, I, I got the I got the original butt stock, but I want to put it back on there. So, Bushmasters started making these, and but one time these Bushmasters, like this one here, were really good guns. Um, and then of course they got bought out by by the same company that owns Remington and we know what kind of crap they've been putting out. And same way with Bushmaster. But this is an old school Bushmaster before they got bought out. Again, I bought this in 1999 under Bill Clinton and Janet Reno and Diane Feinstein's assault weapon ban. What made this assault weapon at the time? Not a damn thing. It's not fully automatic. It's semi-automatic. You dumbass Democrats, that is not, this is not an assault rifle. It never has been. It's an AR-15. AR-15 does not stand for Assault Rifle 15. It stands for Armalite. The name of the company who originally designed the thing. Armalite, dumbasses. Not Assault Rifle. People stop calling them Assault Rifles. They're not Assault Rifles. It's not fully automatic. Especially this one. Because under the gun control ban the first time around, you couldn't have a flash suppressor. That was bad somehow. You couldn't have a bayonet lug. Notice it's missing a bayonet lug. You couldn't have the collapsible stock. For some reason, if I make it shorter so I can shoot, if you're a smaller arm female or a smaller arm person, you can shoot the gun well instead of having it all the way out like this. Oh God, that makes sense. We can't do that. That's a assault rifle. All because it has a pistol grip or it accepts standard cup. Standard capacity magazines, which are 30, 
original Colts came out with, guess what? 20 round magazines. That's what these damn things came with, people. 20 round magazine. Imagine that. And it is unloaded. So hard to go. 20 rounds. This is a Colt, original Colt magazine. If you can see whichever way I got it up, right? It's upside down. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Victoria's our camera woman today. Again, as Hi. you can probably tell. So yeah, it's an original Colt magazine. Imagine that. It won't focus that well. I know it won't. Not unless I got my finger in there. We, well, we're low budget people here. We're here about <laughs> having fun, showing guns, and protecting our rights. So that's the standard capacity magazine for this is uh, 20 rounds. And then somebody in the military said, you know what? We need to get 30 rounds because the AKs and all the newer weapons are having 30. And we can throw 30 rounds in this thing and make it more efficient. Well, guess what? So now we got 30 round magazines. It's not a clip. That's a clip that holds six rounds. Would that be high capacity to Democrats? Could it hold six rounds and it's a clip? Could you imagine having a 30 round clip? There's no way in hell you fit this in a gun. 30 rounds would be like this, idiots. So anyway, we got 30 round magazines. These become standard. It's a, it's a, it's standard. Get over it, Democrats. You're not gonna win. All you have to do is say, well, let's punish the people and hold them accountable. This video has turned into a rant about cult and stupid Democrats. I'm sorry. <laughs> Get back to the guns. Let's stop talking about stupid people. <laughs> so, Bushmaster, I bought this $19.99. I paid $900 for it. $900 for an AR-15. Do you regret it? Uh, mm, I do now because some 25 years later, I could have built two ARs for the price that I paid for this one. Oof. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Just like the TV commercials. God, I hate when you do so, that. <laughs> anyway, $900 in 1999. I'll never get $900 out of it again. All right. Never. So, it's the oldest it's the oldest AR I got. So, one day what did I want to do? I wanted to build an A2 upgraded version. What did he do? Versus. He did it. But this is an um, uh, M, or AR 15A2. We have the solid stock, it has the A2 sights, it has the shell deflector, and the round button for the forward assist instead of the teardrop. This is where the army messed up. Realistically, the teardrop works better than this damn round button because there's more to smack on there. Because you can mess that up and scratch your arm up. Okay. We got the H barrel, the heavy barrel on it, and you got the standard bird cage on it. And standard sights, it with the little hole there, so and it's got the A1 hand guards on it. And it's got the A1 pistol grip. Okay. So my reissued Colt there is my first pony gun. This one right here is my second pony gun. Wait, but you say, Rick, how is that a pony gun? You only own one Colt. That's because this one is made by Anderson Manufacturing. All right, but well, finally focused. <laughs> um, Anderson Manufacturing is in Kentucky, in Hebron. I am from Kentucky originally. I just occupy Tennessee in the name of Daniel Boone. Oh, and, God. <laughs> okay, that'll get some comments. <laughs> that one. Uh, but, but a lot of people call these the poverty ponies. These are guns for poor people. Well, no shit, Dick Tracy. <laughs> I can build... You want to count with me here? I have less than $450 in this gun. Because I got the parts at the right time, at the right cost, or shopped around and they're on sale. That's right. I built this AR-15 for $450. But I paid $900 for that Bushmaster. Well, that was 20 years before I built this one. And I've built other ones, and we're going to see my other, my rest of the family of my AR-15 collection. In later videos. In later videos, and we'll, we will introduce you to ice and fi fire and ice. Baby ice and baby fire. And baby fire and baby ice. And you're like, what the hell are you talking about? You'll, you'll see. To, you'll have to wait to see. Yeah. Um, they, are, they are other AR-15s 
um, and AR-15 pistols we have. We have Mr. Green. We yeah. have... Um, the... Wait, is it the Tamron? We got the Khaki Project Khaki, which you all have already seen, Project Khaki. Yes. Hand, the, hand, the AR-15 handgun. So, uh, maybe you all don't know, but my wife had a stroke and she is paralyzed in one arm. Um, so, and she likes to shoot. Imagine that. I got a wife <laughs> that likes to shoot. Um, yep. My girls do too, so we all like to shoot. Anyway, <laughs> she is handicapped, so she can't shoot this rifle anymore. But she can shoot the pistol brace pistol. I can put a bipod on it, and she can hold it and uh, with one hand, and I'd, I'd have to load it for her, but she'd be able to shoot it. And that's the whole idea for those AR pistols. And they're fun to shoot, let's face it. Everybody like it. So anyway, back to the point. I could build two of these, two different configurations. This has a 20-inch barrel. The Colt M16A1 has a 20-inch barrel. My Bushmaster has a 16-inch barrel, standard carbine. Now, all, all the parts in the lower are exchangeable. I could swap out the upper receivers between both guns, no problem. The lower receivers, no problem. Um, they're all the same. They're military. They're all spec out to the same. They're going to work. Problems you'll come into with commercial parts versus mil spec parts. And honestly, mil spec parts will probably be the cheaper of the two than the commercial side because the commercial side requires a little bit better development and have better quality control than the mil spec. Remember, mil spec doesn't mean quality, it just means it's the lowest bidder for the government. Just remember that. Not all mil spec shit is, not all mil spec is shit. Let's put it that way. But, Remember, it's the lowest bidder, so that's always good. All right, uh, there's only like 12 foundries or something like that in the United States that make the casting for these aluminum parts, and then they're um, machined out. Machining process takes different. Either they're forged, or they're um, billet, or they're forged and billet. It doesn't really matter. Um, the, the thing is, is a, oh, you'll have some flex in it. This one doesn't. <laughs> this is pretty tight. I got another one upstairs. It's got a little bit more room in it. It's, it's an Anderson. Majority of my receive, my lower receivers, matter of fact, all of them, except for the Colt and the uh, Bushmaster and my DPMS, which is Ice, and you'll see her later. Um, yes, they have names and genders. Right. All my <laughs> guns are female. Um, what's that? Oh God. My a my AR-15 says I should not identify it, and it should have its own choice to identify it. Oh uh, anyway, God! What's that? Oh, you're the Hillary Clinton one rifle. <laughs> there you go. I hate the puns that you make sometimes. I, I, I don't know. It wants to be identified as a Hillary rifle. That way, you won't be banned. What's that? Oh, don't worry, you're not gonna get banned. They'll try, but you're not. You'll be okay. Anyway, <laughs> back to Colt and the retardation. Here's the deal. If I want a base rifle for $1,200, why? What's the damn point to it, people? When you can there is no it. point. You're just paying for that name. So my other horse in the stable here doesn't have the high dollar price tag. By God, you can find these lower receivers unassembled for $49 some play at times. Sometimes you can order three of them for 99 bucks. So why the hell would you want to pay $2,400 for something that says Colt on it? Because it says Colt on it? I was going to say. Is this Colt A1 better than this Anderson? Which horse is going to win the race? Oh, God. I can tell you which horse is going to win the race. It's going to be Anderson. You know why? Because they're still making shit. They're not. They sell at a good price point. Even four Anderson rifles do. Colt are good rifles. There's nothing wrong with them. It's just they stopped making them. Well, they stopped making them because they cost 2000 damn dollars. And, like, anyone's that crazy enough to buy that much so, yeah, worth of a gun that you can you build. You can buy one Colt for $2,400, or you can buy four Andersons and build them, or four ARs and build them yourself. It don't have to be Anderson. It could be Aero Precision. It could be BCM. Of course, you're not going to buy four. You might buy two for $2,400. Um, but you're going to get all kinds of features. You're going to get collapsible stock. You're going to get 
the A4 upper receivers. You're going to get flip up sights. You're going to get a red dot on that price tag. My God, the stuff that you could put in $2,400 into this big giant Lego will dwarf the price of this thing. No wonder Colt stopped selling them. And by the way, Colt did not stop selling rifles to the public because of gun control or left wing nut jobs pressuring them. It's all about price point. When you could buy five of these compared to one of these, it's the, the math adds up. It's real simple. You can't buy these five at a time when you could this for the same amount of money for this. One for five. You could buy a nice tricked out AR-15 from 50 different manufacturers nowadays for $1,200 versus a base rifle from Colt for 12 It doesn't make no sense. That's why Colt has lost the AR market, plain and simple. Then they'd say they want to concentrate on their military and law enforcement contracts. Guess what? They don't have those either. If they do, they're, they're only because of sentimental reasons and because my gun stood cold on it. It doesn't matter. The fact is Colt's hidden for bankruptcy not for the first time and not for the second time and I think it's going to be for the fourth time. That, my friends, is the truth about why you... Colt is no longer making these long rifles. Now, what does that mean to us people that own Colts? It means very good things if they go bankruptcy again or if they, you know, because they stop making them. That means the collector market is going to go up. So now you'll be paying high dollar because this thing says cold on it because they don't make it no more. Remember that. If they stop making it, price goes up eventually. Kind of like the dead painters. I paint this picture while I'm alive. I can't give it away for five damn dollars. But once I die, my picture, my paintings are worth millions of dollars. Because somebody says, oh look, it's willing to pay millions of dollars. And there'll be people out there who'll want to pay $3,500 for it. Colt already had the idea when they came up with these things to sell them at $2,400. You know why? Which they knew there's people out there who would buy the damn things for $2,500 because they wanted a retro rifle. Brownells is doing retro rifles right now for $1,200. Not $24. And they got a lot more opportunity. You got different color stocks that they had on them. You got the AR-10, um, the 671, or whatever all the stupid numbers that the Colt had come up with these things, even though it's the same damn rifle. So, that's the point, people. That's why Colt is doing this. Colt is only stopping production because they're losing money and they're trying to stay afloat. And if it does come out and, say, and they say, well, they did it because they were pressured, I'm still going to say bullshit on it because the numbers and the balance sheet at the end of the year, which anybody can go look up, mind you, because they're a public trading, they're a public trading company, so they're on the stock market. You can get their their balance sheet and see how much they made. Now it won't break it down to um, how much they made on ARs, how much they made on 1911s. Let's face it, Colt is stuck a hundred years ago on pistols. 50 years ago on rifles. They don't have nothing that's innovative. They hadn't come up with a new idea in 50 damn years. Oh, let's reintroduce some Colt Python pistols and sell those damn things at $1,200 a piece. Like that's going to work out? It's going to fail too eventually because you did, you're missing the price point and you're missing the market. They the charge market. over. They overcharge. Well, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. The price point is completely out of the ballpark. Now, somebody will get on here and say, well, it's because they got union workers. And I say, that's part of it. The other part is, is when they can only sell 10,000 rifles to Anderson selling 100,000 rifles, or BCM selling 75,000 rifles, or Ruger, or Remington, all or any, and Mossberg, and anybody else who makes AR-15s, selling three, four times as many rifles as Colt does, 
So how does Colt got to make up for that loss of profit margin? He raised the price up. Does that so work out? So it's not out? always on union. And, and no, it has not worked out because now they're not selling these no more. Now, because they're idiots for having the price high. Well, that's because Colt keeps going bankruptcy. And, and if they did go bankrupt, go into bankruptcy again, if they do, and it is because of employees uh, in the union, well, that's their fault for having the union. Um, some people might get mad about this too. I have not had a very good experience when I was in a union. Um, so I don't believe in unions. Um, all that much. They are certain industries in this country that should be unionized, and they're not, like security guards, um, CNAs, um, some of your low-skilled or your entry-level skilled people who get shit on all the time should be unionized. <laughs> Teachers, no. Cops, no. Firefighters, no. Auto employees, hell no. I used to work at GM for 16 years. Not and as a mechanic, I seen the way they put cars together. You do not deserve twenty five dollars an hour for the way you put some of those damn cars together, people. It is complicated and hard. No. UPS drivers, no, no. It, it, unions are here to help people who are getting screwed over. That's a whole other different job. That's a that's a whole other video about unions. <laughs> anyway. But that's why Colt has stopped selling these to the public. One, they don't have, they only have 0.10001% of the market. They don't have even a tenth of a percent of the market, or a thousandth of a market. They're not selling them. So once they go out, that's it. So they announced that, oh, we're going to stop selling them, so people are going to run out and start buying these at high dollars. Well, not this model, because I don't think they make this model anymore. Because it's a couple years old. Um, any Colts, so they'll stop making them. And then the prices will go up on them. And then you'll see them at gun shows next to that old um, Colt Python or old Smith & Wesson Model 29 that people have price tags on for $2,000 because they're telling their wife, I'm going to go sell a gun at the gun show. And really what they're doing, they're just marking the price up. They don't want to sell it. They just want to buy some more guns. And that's their excuse. And that's why they sit there so much. So it's kind of stupid, honest. Well, I've done that to your mom a time or two, so be quiet. Um, anyway. Mean? Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> that's the deal with with Colt and why they're getting out of the market. The fact is that you can build basic AR-15s. If you do it right, you can get them at four hundred dollars. Um, sometimes you can do it around three fifty. I've seen people do it for three fifty. Uh, but really, if you're going to build you a basic AR-15 um, and and get good quality and, and you can use quality parts. Or you can even use the cheap parts. You're going to get one that's going to go bang. Um, Eugene Schoner was a genius when he designed this rifle for a reason. Um, even retards can put them together. <laughs> if that defends somebody, I don't mean mentally challenged people. I mean retarded people like Democrats oh, can God. put these things together. What about liberals? Well, those are Democrats now. There are no true Democrats anymore. It's only the left-wing nut job liberals who call themselves Democrats. Because, see, Democrats use a different video. Um, <laughs> Don't get me on a rant, rant there, Victoria. So, <laughs> okay. I mean, when you can buy a, a rifle and build it yourself, and that's part of the fun, building these. I enjoy building these things. Um, that's part of the fun and, and the responsibility of owning guns. So, um, my, my rifles or my weapons are locked up. Um, they're not going to go nowhere. And sometimes when I'm at work, I think, do my guns miss me? <laughs> what? <laughs> and they probably do because I missed it. But anyway. You're crazy. <laughs> I swear. Gotta put a little comedy in here. Yeah, I know. But that's why Colt has lost the market. You can buy, you can build basic rifles for 450 and under. Um, and they're missing the market. They're missing the price point. That's all. Uh, they're good rifles. Are, I mean, they're a piece of history. And you should have one. Uh, an AR-15. Not, not necessarily Colt. But any AR-15 you like. If you want the, the Gucci AR-15, oh God. which uh, we got a couple of those, you'll see those. Um, In later we, videos, once sure. again, um, a hint of what's coming up back to the uh, Baby Ice and Baby Fire thing. That's another hint of what's coming up in the Gucci Glock thing. The, yeah, the Gucci, the Gucci. Which is kind of stupid to me, to call it yeah, that. Well, the Gucci ARs. And then, oh, God. Um, some which pretty much are just custom designed. Right, well, yeah, everybody wants, you built them. Everybody, 
Yeah, see, this is just a plain old AR-15. Um, Nothing is, special. You know, this one right here is, is a, it's a little customized because I want it to look like an A1, but it's an A2. And then the other one is the dispatcher's carbines. So, um, the point is, is that if you own a Colt, I'd hold on to it because it's going to go up in value and people will pay an obscene amount of money for it. That, that's a fact. And I hope Victoria's not cutting my head off. I'm not. Okay. It's a, like an inch above your head. Oh, well, gee, thanks. So, <laughs> um, so this makes me look shorter. Pretty well, that's much. That's the video <laughs> today about Colts and the AR-15. So, um, it's sad that Colt has let 50 years of innovation pass them by. I mean, um, I would like the 1903 Colt uh, 380 pistol or 32 ACP pistols. Um, why couldn't they come those, make those with aluminum frames and bring them out on the market at a good price? Uh, after all, Kimber makes junk pistols like that all the time and people buy those crappy things. I've had a bad experience with the three Kimbers that I've had, that's why I say that. Um, Just so you know, anytime that we get a review or we get sponsored, that we're going to tell the honest truth. We're not going to be like most channels and lie about it. We're going to tell the honest truth. That's right. We're not a bunch of shields because we're not sponsored by anybody. Yet. Well, I doubt we'll ever get sponsored by anyone. Maybe not. Um, YouTube, <laughs> you never know, though. YouTube will make sure of that. But, um, so that brings us up. We do have a Facebook page. Instagram. We do have an Instagram page. And we do have a Patreon page, if you wish to support this channel. And what would you get for supporting this channel? More content. Yeah. Maybe a better camera. I don't know. I ain't going to ask you to buy no stuff for us. But the money that we would get from it would uh, would go to ammunition so we could do more range testing because that's the most expensive cost we have. Yeah. Um, I live down the street from the pistol range. It's an indoor range. I can go shoot pistols all day long there. I'm a member for a year. So it doesn't cost me nothing to drive out my house and go down there other than buying ammo. ammo. So I can't tell you high rounds. Can. Okay, so, well, I've shot 2,000 rounds through this rifle, and I hadn't had a malfunction. I can't tell you that because... Because we're, um, we're not going to lie about it. We're going to tell the well, honest no, truth. I don't have 2,000 rounds to shoot out of it. True. Would I shoot 2,000 rounds out of it? Probably. Yeah, I <laughs> if I had the ammo, we'd do it. And well, if we had the money. Right. And ammo costs money. So, and and that's even in the handguns. You know, I have shot, we've shot an awful lot of rounds. Especially but, 22. Right. And the, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, so we got a Patreon page and it's like at one, two, and five dollars. Or is it one, five, and ten? I think it's at one dollar a month, five dollar a month, ten dollar a month. If you want to support the channel, I appreciate it. And we're going to do giveaways once we start getting enough to subscribe. Like we get... The 100 Patreon members will will do a giveaway. We got some SIG um, frames, SIG frames for your P320s that we're going to give away. Um, Little hint to more videos that will be coming couple, up, and, and a couple more, um, and a couple Glock extra Glock parts, which I know look cheap, but still, hey, we can get we, we can give something back. Yeah. We would um, another thing we like to do is uh, do uh, take somebody take a liberal shooting. Oh my gosh! Now we've done that with uh, my niece, so oh, uh, maybe we'll, maybe I can get her to do a video, Mariah. Oh. So maybe we can get Mariah coming here and talk about her first time or second time going to the range, and and she was a Bernie Sanders supporter. So anyway, we're rambling. So that's what we like to do. We like to take new people out to the range if we can. That that takes does cost money does and cost takes a while. Ammo. I don't mind so you having them use my firearms. Um, and use my membership at the range, which I pay for personally. That's fine, dandy. But you know, if they're gonna shoot some ammo, I usually tell them they gotta buy their own ammo. And then, then if they do show up, they're always with the wrong ammo, so I end up having to shoot my my ammo. But anyway, but it's not that bad. No, I, it's getting Sorry. somebody used to guns, getting yeah. young people uh, involved in the shooting sports. Because like IDPA. Didn't Even, you start me and Jessica out when we were five? With, with gun guns. safety, yes. Yeah, gun safety. And right. then you let us shoot at what age? Eight. I started letting y'all shoot at eight. So anyway, um, that's the, still, the story with Colt. Um, if you want to, like I said, if you want to help us out on our Patreon page, go ahead. And, and, and if you have a Colt or one of the other type of guns that he mentioned, let us know on Instagram. Let me finish. I'm you sorry. Know.
anyway, if you do have uh, support us, if you want to support us, that's fine, Danny. We appreciate it, and we'll come back with some type of stickers or uh, you know, so, you know I, some I type of merch, some type of merchandise for you, um, and then the giveaways that we got planned, and um, and if you don't want to support us, just then, like and share our content. Yeah. Um, that's good enough for us because we're still going to make videos. I got lots of guns. I got friends that got lots of guns. We got lots of material to make. Yeah. And then whatever comes out new that I can get. Yeah. So that's where we are. So anyway, um, remember to like and subscribe to our Facebook page. Like and subscribe to our Instagram page. Like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we appreciate y'all watching our videos. I think we're up to a thirty-one thousand subscribers right now. I mean, not subscribers. <laughs> I was 30, gonna say. <laughs> I, I, no, we, we probably what? Get to, we're up to um, one hundred and fifty subscribers on our YouTube channel, and we're up to um, thirty-one thousand views. That's what on, you meant. I mean, thirty-one thousand views. And we'll see you guys next time.